Hello people, welcome to my latest video on my top 1000 countdown. Now, these numbers go from 460 to 451 as I start a push to train. Just turbocharge where I am at the moment a little bit. Okay, so we will go through these 10 fighters um, and see where they are and who is in them. Okay, so let us go to the first fighter of this latest 10 fighters on my top 1000 countdown. Um, and it is to a fighter, okay, called, da -da 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 -da, drum roll, Anton Christopheridis. Anton Christopheridis beat three world champions in his career. He also had five fights against world champions overall. And Anton Christopheridis had a total of two world title fights. Uh, Christopher Christopheridis made zero title defences. But against rated fighters, he has quite a number. Anton Christopheridis had 28 fights against top 10 rated fighters. He also um, had 17 fights against top 3 rated fighters. Um, and Anton Christopheridis had 3 fights against ring champions. Now, in his career, okay, as a rated fighter, Anton Christopheridis was top 10 rated for three years. He was top three rated for two years, and Christopheridis was a ring champion for zero years. And against pound for pound rated fighters, okay, Christopheridis had eight fights against pound for pound rated fighters overall. And in terms, okay, of individual pound pound rated fighters be and wait while you see these numbers on Langford and others and Greb Ooh, crazy stuff uh, Anton Christopheridis beat three pound for pound rated fighters so Christopheridis comes in number 460 the first fighter of this 10 let us jump on to fighter who sits in position 459th for now I say for now because it's going to be ever changing with updates um, and this fighter is Ace Hudkins another underrated fighter very very good contender indeed Hey Sudkins um, beat one world champion. He had six fights against world champions um, in his career in entirety. Now, Ace Hudkins, okay, had two world title fights. He made zero title defences. And against rated fighters, okay, he's slightly more than Christopher Reed. He's coming in with a total um, of 33 fights against top 10 rated fighters. Chris, uh, Ace Hudkins, sorry, not Christopher Reed, had 18 fights against top three rated fighters. And Ace Hudkins also had a total of five fights against ring champions now as a rated fighter ace hudkins was top 10 rated for four years he was top three rated for one year and ace hudkins was a ring champion for zero years and against pound for pound rated fighters okay ace hudkins comes in with a total of 11 fights against pound for pound rated fighters and ace hudkins okay individually um, beat three pound for pound rated fighters now, one of the differences between guys in this era and the modern era is they would often fight less pound founders but have fight runs against them uh, when you examine and research. Uh, just a little subtle difference often of the time. And sometimes, like Greb, they just fought more as well uh, and fought them more often. <laughs> Uh, so fighter number 458 okay is feared heavyweight puncher um obi walker former colored heavyweight champion obi, obi walker beat one world champion in his career uh, obi walker had two fights against world champions and in terms of world title fights obi walker had two world title fights he made zero title defenses and against rated fighters obi walker comes in with a total of 25 Fights against top 10 rated fighters. He had 13 fights in total in his career um, against top 3 rated fighters. And Obi Walker had zero fights against ring champions. Now, Obi Walker was completely ignored okay, in ring range. So he was top 10 rated for zero years. Top 3 rated for zero years. And a ring champion for zero years. Just one of a small bunch of fighters who get totally ignored. Um, even though they were respected and or feared during their time. Uh, so all of those are zero. Obi Walker had zero fights against pound pound rated fighters, um, and beat no pound pound rated fighters. But he did have an incredible fight series with Elmer uh, Ray, the violent kid. Okay, a brutal fighter, um, and he also fought a lot of other good fighters as well. Just doesn't get fully recognised for it as he should. So leaving Obi Walker on 458, okay, let us go to fighter number 457 to another fighter that's not spoke of much by many people. Okay, it's Cannonball Eddie Martin. Cannonball Eddie Martin, okay, beat two world champions in his career. Um, he had a total of nine fights against world champions overall. And Cannonball Eddie Martin had a total of four world title fights. He made one title defense. And against rated fighters, okay, Eddie Martin had 17 fights against top 10 rated opposition he had 10 fights against top 3 rated fighters and cannonball eddie martin had six fights 
against ring champions. Now, as a rated fighter, okay, crossing over from the non rated to the rated era, Cannonball Lenny Martin was top uh, 10 rated, not top 3 rated, top 10 rated for two years. He was then top 3 rated for one year. He was also a ring champion for one year in his career. And Cannonball Lenny Martin had one fight against a pound pound rated fighter, interestingly enough, and he beat no pound pound rated fighters. So Cannonball Lady Martin comes next in number 457. Had a tough career though, fought a lot of good fighters, a lot of good contenders as well. Uh, certainly um, certainly a, a good tough little career he had in many ways. So let's leave the old time, okay, um, the 30s and the 20s, and let's come to the modern time to fight at number 456 um, to one of the longest um, reigning champions in cruiserweight history. Um, it is actually Marco Hook. Marco Hook, I say, goes a bit underrated, not only for his title record, but for his resume as well. Very tough resume, actually, when you look at it properly. Marco Hook beat four world champions in his career individually, and he's had a total of 10 fights against world champions overall. And Marco Hook, okay, in numbers that match Kazuta Ioka, Marco Hook had 19 World title fights, uh, whether he gets another one is unlikely, but possible, I guess. Uh, and like Ioka, he also made 13 title defences. Now, Marco Hook had 18 fights against top 10 rated opposition. Um, he's had in his career 10 fights against top 3 rated fighters. And Marco Hook has had two fights against ring champions. Now, he's also one of the longest rated cruiserweights of all time. Uh, Marco Hook was top 10 rated for 11 years. He was top 3 rated for 5 years. Um, and Marco Hook was a ring champion for 2 years. And against pound pound rated fighters, Marco Hook had one fight against pound pound rated fighter. And he beat no pound pound rated fighters. Just had a quick drink, could feel my throat tickling. So... Let's go to fighter number 455, okay, um, and this fighter is heavyweight puncher, um, and feared heavyweight puncher to many, Nino Valdez pictured fighting Archie Moore. Nino Valdez beat one world champion in his career, he had a total of five fights against world champions, and Nino Valdez comes in with a total of zero world title fights, Nino Valdez also made zero title defences, um, and Valdez had a record of 28 fights against top 10 rated fighters. He had 13 fights against top three rated fighters and Nino Valdez had five fights against ring champions. Now, as a rated fighter himself, Nino Valdez was top 10 rated for a total um, overall of five years. Valdez was top three rated for three years and he was a ring champion for zero years. And against pound pound rated fighters, okay, Nino Valdez had five fights against pound pound rated fighters and he beat individually um, one pound pound rated fighter so nino valdez comes in 455 okay feared heavyweight contender of his time of marciano's era so let us take a look now um leaving nino valdez on 455 let's come forward okay to the 1980s uh, to one of the best flyweight champions of the 1980s and goes a bit underrated himself as a flyweight fighter. Um, this fighter is from the Pacific Basin region. It is Sochitalada. Sochitalada, excellent little fighter he was, okay, beat six world champions. Uh, Chitalada had 12 fights against world champions overall. And Sochitalada comes in with a large total of 16 world title fights. Uh, Chitalada made 10 title defences. And against rated fighters, okay, Sochitalada had 13 fights against top 10 rated fighters. He also had 11 fights um, in his career against top 3 rated fighters. And Chitalada had two fights against ring champions. Now he was quite quite a dominant rated fighter down at flyweight during his career. One of the really most consistent top rated flyweights in the world. For a number of years, Sochi Talada uh, was top 10 rated for 8 years, okay, and he was an almost virtual consistent top 3 rated fighter, being top 3 rated for 7 years. And Sochi Talada was also um, a ring champion for 4 years, okay, so a good run there. Now, Sochi Talada against pound pound rated fighters had a total of 6 fights against pound pound rated fighters, and Sochi Talada um, beat 2 individual pound pound rated fighters. 
So, former flyweight champion, lineal champion, Sochi Talada comes in 454. Now we're going back in time to a heavyweight puncher, um, but sadly didn't have a good enough winning record against his good opposition to finish any higher. And also being a great puncher helped him uh, raise up a bit more than what he would have been. Uh, George K.O. Cheney, okay, beat one world champion. Um, he had a total of 15 fights against world champions overall. And George K.O. Cheney fought 101 rounds against world champions. Now in Hall of Fame, Fame stats, okay, just a small selection of the many I have. George K.O. Cheney beat one Hall of Fame fighter. He also had 16 fights against Hall of Famers overall and fought 108 rounds against Hall of Fame fighters. Now, in terms of world title fights, George K.O. Cheney had two world title fights. He made zero title defences and he fought eight title fight rounds. And against rated fighters, champions or Hall of Famers, George K.O. Cheney, pre-rating here a fighter, of course. He comes in with a total of 17 fights against um, rated fighters, champions or Hall of Famers. And he comes in with a total of 15 fights against pound-pound rated fighters and he beat no pound-pound rated fighters. The reason why George K.O. Cheney didn't finish higher is he was a great one-punch knockout man. He could knock you out one punch. He beat a lot of good fighters. But against his better opposition, the Pound for Pounders Hall of Famous Champions, he has a massive losing record against them. So he's good enough to beat one level of fighter very well, but not good enough to beat the top level fighters, which hurt his rating. So, Howard Winston comes next. UK's Howard Winston comes next in 452 pitcher, I believe, fighting Mitsunori Seki. So Howard Winston beat one world champion in his career. Um, he had five fights against world champions. And he had to go a few before getting it. Uh, but Howard Winston did have five world title fights. He made zero title defences. And Howard Winston comes in with a record um, of 22 fights against top 10 rated fighters. He also has a record of 10 fights against top 3 rated fighters. And Howard Winston had three fights against ring champions. Now, as a rated fighter himself, okay, Howard Winston was top 10 rated for eight years. He was top three rated for three years. And Howard Winston was a ring champion for zero years. And against pound pound rated fighters, Howard Winston comes in with a total of five fights, okay, against pound pound rated fighters. And Howard Winston beat one pound pound rated fighter individually. So to many people, this is one of the great UK fighters, okay, um, down there at Featherweight. And great UK fighter overall. I've seen many people list Howard Winston as a top 10 UK fighter. Doesn't quite get in there on my list, along with Charlie White's and Lewis's and Welsh's. Um, but certainly deserving of respect and a fantastic little fighter he was. So the last fighter on the playlist, 451, is modern super middleweight champion again from the UK, Carl the Cobra Froch. Now, Carl Froch um, beat in his career eight world champions. Um, he also had a record of 11 fights against world champions overall. And Carl Froch comes in with a total of 12 world title fights. Froch made a total of seven title defences. And against rated fighters, okay, Froch, who had a small fight number, but fought a lot of good fights in there, had 13 fights, okay, against top 10 rated fighters. Froch had 11 fights against top 3 rated fighters. And Carl Froch had four fights against ring champions. Now, Carl the Cobra Froch was top 10 rated for eight years. He was top three rated for six years. And Carl Froch was a ring champion for zero years. And against pound for pound rated fighters, okay, Carl Froch comes in with a total of four fights against pound for pound rated fighters. And Carl Froch beat three pound for pound rated fighters. So there people, there you go, two videos in a day. I am going to try and um, speed up my increase now to get this playlist finished. Head to that all-important top 100 and top 10. But there's my second video a day. I'll do another one tomorrow um, as I start cooking this playlist down. Uh, but there's 20 fighters covered today. Many, many, many more coming as I head to that all-important top 10. Uh, but that's it for today. This is the Boxing Librarian. I'm out for now.